Hey all, uh, this is pretty much the first real video review that I'm doing, but it's not a full video review in the sense I'm not, you'll see. Um, anyway, this is up for review. Thanks to Noctua for sending it out. Uh, the NHL 12 low profile heatsink. Now, they're pretty much fashioning this heatsink towards low level computers, more HTPCs and stuff like that, because I'll tell you why, without the top fan, it is 66 millimeters high. Now, I would show it to you, but it's not there. It is currently in the computer, being run through Prime 95, and it's been running for about, let me see, just under 22 minutes, give or take. And we'll move over to the computer. As you can see, yes, that is a Rampage 4 Extreme, and inside that Rampage 4 Extreme is an Intel 3960X 6 core processor. Now, why on God's green earth would I test a low profile heatsink on this kind of processor, uh, this kind of heatsink, blah blah blah? Well, to be honest, if this heatsink can do a good job on this processor, it can do a good job on any processor. Now, Installation took about five minutes. Believe me, it is probably one of the easiest heat sinks to install. You can't really see it, but if you can, right in there behind there is kind of a hole. So this fan comes off in about two seconds by clips in the sides. Right into that hole is a screw, and the same right there you can see it. And those are two screws that screw onto the plate. It's a lot easier on a socket 2011 board because they have their built in uh, retention system so you don't have to put a back plate or anything like that into it which to be honest is fantastic and thank god they did it by the time um yeah so 3960x at stock which is 3.9 uh gigahertz as you can see down here uh voltages is 1.28 this is purely stock i left at stock 3.9 gigahertz so that was the turbo ratio so what degrees does it get? You've probably seen it when I flashed the screen a second ago, but if you didn't, there you go. If you don't already know, that's incredible. For such a small heatsink, that is insane. That is beyond insane. I'm truly shocked that a heatsink that low, that small, could get such great results with this kind of processor. A six core processor, it's just, it's, it's insane. It's truly insane. And to be honest, I'm, while I'm shocked that I can do it, I'm not shocked because Noctua, they kill it every time. This is the first heating they released in a good while, and well, to be honest, it's it's, it's like it's the first heatsink that they've emphasized in a while. Since the NHD 14, I can see why this this is brilliant. To be honest, like in the end, your one your processor is never going to reach 100, percent and even if it did, this would. Like this is more than that's acceptable. That's like to be honest, that's that's more than good enough for me. So it, it's it's hard to describe how well this actually works. To be honest, because look, when you see it, like it looks pretty awesome in there like that. It's you know, with a computer like this, you don't really see a fan like that because most people either have water cooling NHD fourteen. Corsair H100, something like that, in the sense that they have a, a decent, really decent heatsink to to cool everything and keep everything cool. But the, it's such a small. The, the only issue I have with it, the only thing I can talk about, it, it's it's kind of a tight squeeze. I don't know if you can see that, if it's too dark or not, but like it is a tight fit, so you'd want to be sure. Like I don't, to be honest, I would not get any more RAM sticks in there. I don't. Well, maybe I would. I, but it, you can't really see it now, but the, there's empty RAM slots on each side there. I don't know if I get RAM slots in there. It, no, I'd say I would. Yeah, no, I, I would. I would. I would be able to fill it. And the great thing is that this loads air directly onto the board, so this is cooling everything from your VRMs to the RAM to pretty much everything. It's, it blows the air straight onto it, so you have nothing to worry about there. Now, let's see if you can see the top there. Comes with two fans. Um, I have a little booklet here. I really, I have pictures. So if you want to see everything, like the fans and everything from that, you can jump onto the link below, and you can see everything there. But 
pretty sure it's an 80 mil fan. I'm not 100% on that. I'll turn to this book. It's a 92 millimeter fan. Yeah, you can see it there. 120 was 92. The 120 is the Focus Flow fan, which is a review of as well on the site. Uh, the link for that will be below as well. Um, extra low profile 92 millimeter single fan mode. Um, that means if you take the 120 millimeter fan off, which you can, it comes with it. You can take it off if you want. You don't have to. You can leave it on. If you do take it off, the height of this uh, entire thing will be 66 millimeters high. Um, okay, here's the specs of the fan. Uh, this is the uh, that is the uh, NFF12 fan, 1500 RPM max, uh, with the Lowe's noise adapter. It's 1200. Blah blah blah. You can read all that on the review. This is the NFB9 PWM fan. This is the 1600 RPM. This is the little small one. Uh, yeah, this is the 92 millimeter fan. And um, blah blah blah. You can see all the specs here. Uh, let me see. Uh, max accusing noise is 1760. It's silent. It's it's not true. Of course it's silent. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, this is pretty much heatsink specifications. Dimension 93 by 150 by 128 millimeters. That's extremely small. It is. Uh, weight with NFB9 and NFF12 608 80 grams. Uh, circuit compatibility. Uh, see, you can see that. That is not going to focus, is it? That's not going to focus. Uh, it's a. Uh, as you know, uh, LGA 2011, LGA 1366, uh, 1155, 1156, uh, LGA 775, AMD, backplate required, AMD 2, 3, plus FM1, blah, blah, blah. Uh, pretty much records everything. Um, what else? Scope of delivery. This is what you get. You get the 92mm fan, 120mm fan, low noise adapter, 4 uh, pin Y cable, so you can plug both of the fans into one header on your computer. Which makes sense. Uh, the NTH1 high grade thermal compound, and uh, of course, secure from two mending systems, so it covers pretty much everything. That's pretty much all the specs, but you can read all this on the review itself, which is in the link below. Um, okay, so this test has been running for just under 30 minutes, and you can see the results there. That's highest result is. Uh, 75, 72, 72, 74, 76, and 77. So, that's, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I wouldn't recommend overclocking on this, but let's be honest, this isn't the type of heatsink you would use on this process. The whole point of this test is just to show that any process that you put on it, from Sandy Bird, Sandy Bird Enthusiast, AMD, anything, no matter what it is, this thing can handle it, even at load, depending if you overclock it, depending on how much volts, because that's pretty much all it comes down to, heat comes from the volts, so remember, no matter what, keep an eye on your volts, that's all I can say, it's every heat sink, every processor I should say is different, so, like, I can't really say if you're at 3.4 or 4.2 or whatever, make sure your volts are okay, because they're all different, um, they can overclock different, uh, but yeah, that's the results. Um, there's not really much else to show you when it comes to a heatsink other than how well it performs, and that's pretty much it. So, if you want to read all the specs, how much it costs, stuff like that, you can jump over to the site, which is down below. It's geektech.ie. Um, that's it. Uh, this has been Craig. Enjoy. I hope you. Uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, stay tuned for more reviews. Goodbye.